trying to get a hold of algebra or avoid algebra can be incredibly frustrating. It shows up in all the different places where you least expect it. So if you were to consider maths as Tinder, algebra would be your uber sexual, pansexual, metrosexual fuckboy who basically matches with everyone in town is there in every single person's profile picture but you never know where to exactly find him or what to expect out of it in this session we would actually tell you about all the buddies that algebra is popular with and how you cannot get a hold of algebra completely without studying these areas as well in fact if you understand these areas as well you can expand your knowledge and the scoring areas in the math section of the cat examination Please do let us know how you like this video in your comment section below. You can ask your queries on YouTube, through email, WhatsApp, Telegram group, Quora, Facebook, Instagram. All the links are available in the description of this particular video. While you're at it, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and please do share this with your friends who are preparing for CAT and other MB entrance examinations. Let's get started with this. By itself, algebra will probably have only about four to five questions in a usual CAT paper. Right? But if you expand the scope, you would see that as many as 10 questions or sometimes even 13 questions can be classified in algebra in some form or the other, especially questions which come up in functions, indices, thirds and logarithms and progressions. They can be very easily studied if you know your basic algebra properly. In fact, the only thing in functions which can be technically classified as modern mathematics will basically be the function composition, the function of a function, right? Or all those miscellaneous things where you use, uh, you know, put input the value of one function into the other and all those things which come up in the functions part, right? Usually there is only one question in each slot which... Uh, can be classified as purely modern maths. Similarly, to solve questions in indices, thirds and logarithms, most of the time you will be using algebra. It will come up either as a quadratic equation or it will probably come up as a modulus. All those questions have to be solved using some principles of algebra as it is. Even in the progressions questions, there are quite a few things which can be simplified if you know your algebra properly. Right. So let's look at what should be your preparation for algebra and how to proceed with it. Right? I would say algebra should be prepared in two stages. In the first stage, you should look at your basic equations, linear equation, quadratic equations, get a hold of the functions part as well. Understand how a linear function works, right? Where does it intersect the x axis? Where does it intersect the y axis? How does a quadratic function work? The maxima and the minima of that quadratic function and a basic hold of the inequalities, right? This is very essential to score marks even in the other sections as well. Then proceed to indices, thirds and logarithms. Usually you will find this clubbed with the numbers part, but if you look at it carefully, there'll be a lot of questions which require you to solve equations, find maximum, minimum, inequality, that sort of range will also be there. Then a slightly loosely related topic will be on progressions. You may not be directly required to solve questions using algebra, but to actually manipulate it, you will eventually end up with an equation to solve, usually with one variable or two variable to solve that equation. Again, your knowledge of algebra is going to help you solve these questions very quickly, right? Only thing which you need to know initially for the progressions part is arithmetic geometric progressions. Understand that a mixed series is not going to blow up on your face, right? Just put some values, see how you can solve those questions, finding the nth term, finding the sum of the terms even if you're a little slow initially don't worry about it get comfortable with it you will make progress much much faster at least if there are two questions or three questions in progressions in your mock at least you will be able to solve one out of them you will not be just staring blankly at the screen the second stage of algebra you will probably have to improve your knowledge a little bit higher order equations usually one question max comes up in the cat examination per slot you want, you can probably look at arithmetic mean greater than or equal to geometric mean, right? Then you can look at arithmetic geometric progression, the method of squares, how to go about converting a combined progression into either an arithmetic or a geometric progression, how to find the summation of that, which are the areas where it is useful. It has not come up in CAT for quite some time, but 
it's it's good idea especially with IFT and that to know this then you can look at integral solutions and wavy curve method we have done most of these in our explainer series already right so if you look at just the knowledge which is available in your explainer series that is good enough to solve all these questions on algebra indices search logarithms and progressions and even quite a few questions on functions as well now once you have mastered this right you can probably look at the next very ultra if you have like we have been scoring everything in algebra, arithmetic, geometry, all the things which are there. To expand your knowledge, you can probably look at Diophantine equations, Descartes' rule of roots, cauchy schwarz inequality. But this should be done if only if you are scoring a 99 percentile or higher. There is no need to learn this till the time you reach that particular stage. Right. Even then, you would realize that just by substituting some values and showing some amount of confidence, you can easily go up to the next stage of 99.5 percentile or higher. Right. Uh, no discussion of algebra can be complete without the application of arithmetic and numbers, as we have been discussing throughout this series. Uh, these two will be shown throughout the math section. I mean, you cannot say that you will be able to do anything in maths without these two areas. So let's look at what are the most common things from these two areas, which will be applicable in arithmetic section, uh, in the algebra section and the other sections which we have discussed. Right. With arithmetic, the most common things are ratios and percentages. In fact, a lot of questions in arithmetic, you might require some amount of algebra to solve or vice versa, just like with questions on quadratic equations with logarithm or functions with quadratic equations. Arithmetic also features quite prominently in algebra questions. For example, you might have a question which might look, at, look like a, a <coughs> selling price plus cost price, two items, one item increased by X percent, the other increased by Y percent. You will have to use some amount of algebra to solve the final equations or the set of equations. As we discussed in the previous session on arithmetic questions on time speed distance time and work instead of trying to use the assumed value initially you can form that equation use algebra to solve those equations rather than just trying to go straight away to the assumed value part till you get used to it <clears throat> numbers again throughout you will be required to use some amount of numbers over there. A lot of questions on algebra require you to find roots of an equation, odd numbers, even numbers, prime numbers, composite numbers. So all your classification of numbers, factorials and factors and multiples, basic LCM and HCF concept, divisibility rules, very helpful for uh, understanding or finding out prime numbers, finding out squares and cubes, square root and uh, finding out approximating the square root. We have done all this throughout our algebra explainer series. Please do have a look at those parts. We have solved quite a few on indices third logarithms by using these squares and cubes and higher powers of 2, 3, 5, 7, etc. So definitely have a look at those parts. Make sure that you identify those numbers, identify those squares and cubes quickly so that you can actually go to the mechanics of solving the algebra question. And lastly, how do you tackle mocks? The best way to tackle mocks is just as we discussed earlier. If you don't know anything, leave it, right? Come back to it either during the examination or in the analysis stage. If you can come back to that question in the analysis stage, in the examination stage itself, try to solve it with whatever knowledge that you have. If you cannot solve it when you're analyzing the mock, look at the solution, right? If it requires some formula which you've never heard of, right? Don't forget it. Just make a note of it and try to search on either Wikipedia or anywhere else. What is the basic formula about, right? See the past CAT papers. We have uh, we have CAT papers. Anything which is publicly available, we have already listed out quite a few questions from maths in the CAT paper. We have segregated it by topic, so you should be able to find those questions very easily. If that has not come up in the past CAT papers you basically can leave it, right? It is not going to come up again. Chances are that it should not come up again. Again, if you are scoring a 99 percentile and you want to improve it to a 99.5, even then, this might not be the best way to do it. Now, a lot of things come up over 
the internet which basically tells you like you know this came up in the dark ages of cat which is from cat 2009 to cat 2016 those eight years cat did not release the cat did not release the official question paper so everything is you know memory based right uh again that is basically fake news or fraud anything can be posted as memory based right you cannot assume that you know those questions are going to come up again right there are some questions which are still relevant in this 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 year's cats which uh, which basically is kept on asking uh, which ca- cat keeps on asking over and over again but most of the questions can be avoided if anything says that you know it's memory based just leave it as it is that completes this particular session on what to prepare for the quant part of the cat examination please do let us know in the comments below how did you like it you can connect with us through all these different channels the links are all available in the description of this video please do subscribe to our youtube channel like and follow us on facebook instagram all the other places uh, which we are available we'll try to take as many questions as possible uh, throughout this explainer series till we meet again the next time goodbye stay safe and all the best